listen to those actors warming up. Authentic. He's never done that before, you know. He's probably just doing it because he knows that we're filming this. Um, it's not uh, the same as at other theatres in, in any way, really. It's um, it's a unique experience. You can see everyone, and that's um, it's. I suppose it's advantageous or not, depending on what you're doing. In the early days of putting something on here, I found for myself being out there and you can see people, you have to, I have to pretend to not see them. You don't pretend there's nobody there, but you just don't want to engage them just in case they're like, like that. Because you can sometimes look at people and they're like that. I hope you're not doing that. I hope you really are enjoying it. What's nice is, as you get more confident, you can start to make eye contact with some people. And then eventually you can, you can do it all to people. And then it feels weird that you ever pretended there was nobody there in the first place. It's just the best place to work. It's uh, wonderful. When I first started reading this book, I knew this play because I was in this play years ago. It was one of the first plays I was ever in playing Slender. Irony. So I knew the play. The weird thing about doing this production is my overriding memory of that production that we did, like, I don't know, nearly 30 years ago, I suppose, um, is how complex it was and how, how unclear the story is. And when we've done this, doing this, it's like, how did we ever think that isn't clear? It's so clear. There are two strands of the story and they're both very clear. The suitors for Anne Page and the um, Falstaff plot with the wives. It's like super clear. That's one of the things I love about this production is its clarity and all the people who are in it who I think are brilliant and just love doing this show. Absolutely love it. The last thing I did here was um, the ensemble last year, um, Hamlet and As You Like It. Um, I was Rosencrantz in uh, Hamlet. Uh, As You Like It, uh, I adored doing that because that was, you know, again, a part that's not necessarily supposed to be funny, but I thought, well, this is really funny. This could be really, really funny. Um, and hopefully it was. And then that was the same, you know, sort of laconic, dry, back foot sort of thing. They're, that's why I love this place, because they let me do things like that. They let me, like, you know, eat a banana through the seven ages of man's speech. They'll let me, like, um, ad lib. It's just in the rehearsal, it's like scattergun and throw everything at it and see what sticks and, you know, and then you finally, like, you know, keep the, the best bits. But I don't see a problem with that. I don't see why you can't do that. I'm sure there are people who are like, well, if it doesn't say it in the script, don't say it. Well, I'm going to say it if it's such an anachronistic term that hasn't been said for centuries, then why not give you a, an idea of what it might mean now with, you know, a modern equivalent of it plus the original. So you're getting two lots for your money, really. <laughs> If you listen, you can hear Shakespeare turning in his grave. There he is now.